MEC, I'm hoping you can hear us better now. And I want to start with just how widespread the issue of stigma is, particularly in the health sector in Limbobo. Yeah, afternoon to Miguel and afternoon to all your viewers out there. I think indeed um, the, 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 the stigmatization, it, it's getting to a level where in, it's becoming difficult to even healthcare workers themselves who can uh, go and test with confidence and come and be close to their fellow uh, workers. Because when you see what happens uh, when an individual announced that the test is positive, and, and in one of the facilities there was even a WhatsApp group which was created uh, to talk about this particular employee. And when after 14 days, uh, when she's supposed to come back to work, she was asking me a question, how do I work with people who 14 days ago, this is what they were saying, saying about me. What we, we are finding out, uh, of course, to be a uh, probable development, uh, being a COVID-19 in its own, work on its own, when we, we, it was plagued by as a pandemic, there, there was fear that has been instilled amongst the public, not just the public, including healthcare workers. The more messages that we spread, whether it's us in government, whether it's professionals, whether it's the media, it was the issue of COVID-19 equivalent to that. Mm -hmm. We didn't come across to be spreading more message to say out of 80, 60 to 80% of us will one day be infected. And out of us, 80% might just not even have symptoms or mild symptoms and get COVID. get hospitalization and recover. Of course, there will be 5% that might require ICU and 3% might succumb to death. That message did not come out strong. And that even that 3% will definitely majority having other comorbidities. The message was about COVID-19 is equivalent to death. Just like when we started fighting HIV and AIDS. And this is what is perpetuating the stigma, the public fear out there that if COVID has positive, it means, oh, she is going to die. And it means she will infect us. And if she infects us, we are going to die. We, we should be probably emphasizing the messages of the recovery, as, as the minister has always been saying. All right. If we let's balance in terms of those who recover so that we, we reduce this stigmatization, because free public fear is the one that is perpetuating this stigma. But the MEC, the unique danger when it's health workers perpetuating the stigma is that you then begin to wonder about their treatment and attitudes towards patients who test COVID-19 positive. This is, this is where the worry is, to say, um, if now we start to see each other uh, and, and look at each other they, 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 to say this one is positive might infect me. You then, what are you going to do when you really have to deal with a patient who is positive? The, the, the team that is doing a trace aware, where if I test positive, they must come in and do my contact tracing. They, 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 they would share with me stories that their other colleagues will even refuse to talk to them thinking that, oh, these ones might infect us. So, so it's getting to that level that we, we have got to, to deal with it because you will remain with uh, only fewer people who will be willing to treat uh, uh, patients who are infected with COVID-19. We are also saying as a, as a department, let's adopt the stance that everybody is COVID-19 positive. And if we do that, then we will not be stigmatizing. Let's just treat each other to say we are positive. Some of us are just symptomatic. Some of us are not. Some of us are unfortunate and sick. Some of us are fortunate and are not sick. And it's not anyone's fault to be positive. If we do that and we treat each and every surface as if it's contaminated with the virus, then if we do those two, we will reduce uh, the, the infection we will also reduce the rate of stigmatization. And as a, as a department, we are also saying all of us, will, majority of us, by the time we deal with this pandemic, by the time the storm is over, would have tested positive one way or another. And uh -huh. the only thing that a government will 
vaccine is that let's make sure that fewer people get infected at a time. If we get so many people being infected at the same time, that's when the health system will be failed to cope and fail to provide treatment to and us. But just on the health care system, not, MEC, uh, apologies, I don't mean to cut you off. Just on the health care system, I want to squeeze in another question because our Skype line quality is deteriorating again. Gauteng and the Western Cape are now at a level where we're bracing for the peak of COVID-19. Limpopo has just over 1,200 cases that have been recorded since March. Ten people have sadly died. What is the forecast for Limpopo as far as the worst case scenario and when it's likely to occur? The, 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 the forecast is it's what we, we indicated in terms of our search plan, that we, we would want to focus on the vulnerable and on the elderly. While we are preparing our 8,000 beds, and that already 3,000 are ready, and also preparing our 351 ICU beds and, and ice ventilators and already saying let's protect the vulnerable by uh, utilizing the approach of household uh, quarantine where we are saying that will also uh, reduce uh, the stigmatization where we are saying learning from our ancestors that uh, isolation has been happening for many years and uh, long before we could even have the, the, the so-called uh, civilization we we would when you give birth as a woman your child will be put in a in a random bed where no one will access uh, you and your baby except the midwife. Even the father of the baby was not allowed access to protect the baby from being infected by you. So because you will be getting infections from all over. So infectious diseases have been there and our, our ancestors have been surviving this. So as Limpopo, we are saying, if we find you being vulnerable at, at your home, we will identify that rendezvous or that bedroom where we're saying let's keep you there so that you don't interact with other members of the household and the community members. Therefore, you will not be infected until this storm is over. We are bringing a system where we will be able to monitor and track your movements so that you do not move outside your household. If you don't do that, you will therefore be protected. Therefore, the storm will come and the people who will get infected are those who will be able to deal with the virus through their immune system. Okay. And those who will require ventilation will be fewer. And in that, our health system will be able to cope. MEC Popira Matuba, the health MEC in Limpopo, thank you.